God has got no images is for the people of higher consciousness. For the people of low consciousness, they require idol to concentrate. I said, where is that mission in the scripture? I said, no, no, that is our philosophy. So the religious leaders, they bring their philosophy and say that idol is used for concentration. I do agree with you, they tell me. Dr. Naik, the Vedas are against idol worship. The Vedas are against Almighty God having images. But that is for people of higher consciousness. So I tell them that dear Panditji, dear Swamiji, we Muslims have already reached the higher consciousness. We don't require any image. So what we require in this way, most of the religious leaders, or the priests, or the pundits, of most of the religions, what they do, same way, I prove to you very clearly that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he never claimed divinity. Yet, you find that the priest will tell you, believe that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, died for your sins, and you'll get salvation. Now where did Jesus Christ say that, peace be upon him? So what we realize, that's the reason I tell the Hindus, go back to your Vedas. I tell the Christian, go back to your scriptures. I know there are differences, brother. I'm not saying that there are no differences in the religions. I can give a longer talk on the differences between Islam, Hinduism and Christianity. But what do I say to all the human beings? At least believe that one scripture is 100% the word of God. Now, most of the human beings won't have a problem accepting that. The Hindu will say, I have got no problem accepting Veda as the word of God. The Christian will say, I have got no problem accepting Bible to be 100% the word of God. The Muslim will say, I have got no problem accepting the Quran to be the word of God. Then I tell, at least let us follow what is common in these scriptures. What is different, we'll discuss it tomorrow. Let us agree to follow what is common. And in my speeches, I try and get the commonalities and I prove that all the major scriptures, whether it be Hinduism, Christianity, Judaism, Parsism, Sikhism, Islam, all of them say there is one God. He has got no images. He is not begotten. He has got no parents. Let's worship this one God. All the major scriptures, Judaism, Christianity, Hinduism, Buddhism, Parsism, they say there is a messenger to come. His name is Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. I can give a talk on Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the Hindu scriptures. I can give a talk on Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the major world religions. So I say at least let us agree there is one God who is not begotten, has got no image, has got no idol. Second point, all the major scriptures say there is a messenger to come. And this final messenger, his name is Prophet Muhammad. It's mentioned in the Bible, in the Gospel of John, chapter number 16, verse number 12 to 14. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says, I have many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. For he, when the spirit of truth shall come, he shall guide you unto all truth. He shall not speak of himself. All that he hear, shall he speak. He shall glorify me. New Testament, talking about Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Old Testament, book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 18, verse number 18 speaks about the coming of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 18, verse number 19 speaks about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In the book of Isaiah, chapter number 29, verse number 12 speaks about the coming of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Song of Solomon, chapter number 5, verse number 16, in the Old Testament, speaks about Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. In the New Testament, Gospel of John, Chapter number 14, verse number 16. Gospel of John, chapter number 15, verse number 26. Gospel of John, chapter number 16, verse number 7. Gospel of John, chapter number 16, verse number 12 to 14. All these speak about coming of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I can only give references. Hindu scripture. If you read the Hindu scriptures, Bhavishya Purana, Parva 3, Khanda 3, Adhyay 3, Shlokas 5 to 8. Bhavishya Purana, Parva 3, Khanda 3, Adhyay 3, Shlokas 10 to 27, speak about Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Atharavave speaks about Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rigve speaks about Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We can give a lecture. And in the Kalki Purana, it speaks about Kalki Avatar to come. It says that the name of his father will be Vishnu Yas, means the servant of God. In Arabic, Abdullah, which was the name of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's father. His mother's name would be Sumati, which means serenity, calm, peace. In Arabic, it means Amina, which was the name of the mother of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. It's mentioned he will be born on the 12th month of Madhav. That twelfth Rabbi Awal. It's mentioned that he will have four companions talking about the first four Khulfa Rashidin. It says he will be born in a city of peace, which is talking about Makkah. It says that he will be born in the chief of the tribe of Makkah. On and on and on, talking about no one but the last and final messenger. So I tell, leave aside the differences. Let us agree on the commonalities in Hinduism, in Christianity, in Judaism, in Parthianism, 
in Buddhism, in Islam, there is one God. He begets not. He has got no images. Worship him and no one else. The last and final messenger to come is Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So if you agree with these commonalities and you follow his message, all will be united. But the people who are thekedar of religion, you know thekedar, I mean the priest of religion, they don't want to lose their flock. So they prevent the followers to read the scripture. Believe me, I have got no problem with Hindus. They love me, they respect me. Believe me, people normally feel scared to speak about religion. I love it. And believe me, the non-Muslim respect me many a time more than the Muslims. When I walk through the customs, the non-Muslim customs of the doctor Zakir Naik. He will speak the truth, nothing but the truth, as I'm taking oath in the court of law. So what we realize, we speak the truth. So I do agree with you, brother, the difference of intolerance is because of the religious priest, the religious leaders. Therefore, we have to make the scriptures common and come to a common term, and the whole humanity would be one, brother. Hope that answers the question, brother. Thank you, Dr. Zakir Naik. Yes, can we take a question on to my left, the mic behind? My name is uh, Pascal. I'm a teacher by profession. I'm a Christian. Taking for granted that you agree the Gospels translated in English, which we Christians believe, I will quote these examples. Number one, in all the four Gospels, when Christ came out of the waters of baptism, there was a voice from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Listen you to him. My name is uh, Pascal. I'm a teacher by profession. I'm a Christian. Taking for granted that you agree the Gospels translated in English, which we Christians believe, I will quote these examples. Number one, in all the four Gospels, when Christ came out of the waters of baptism, there was a voice from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Listen you to him. In the same way, number two, on Mount Tabor, when he was transfigured and when his face shone like the sun, there was a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Listen you to him. And several times when he cast out the devils, they came out of the men proclaiming, Thou son of the living God, why have you come to torture us before that time? And again, before the high priest, when the high priest asked him, in the name of the living God, I ask thee, art thou the son of the living God? Christ says, thou hast said it. And the priest, and the number five, the high priest and the scribes, when they accused Jesus before the Pilate, they say, this man says, he is the son of God. It is a blasphemy according to our religion. Therefore, we want to crucify him. Pilate didn't know about it. The very reason why they wanted to put Christ on the cross is that he claimed himself to be the son of God. Because even though he didn't directly say, I am the son of God, it is indirectly said. Suppose I say, you are Dr. Zakir Naik, and you are an ambiguous doctor, and you tell me, yes, brother, you have said it. Is it not amount to saying that yourself saying, I am Dr. Zakir Naik, ambiguous? In the same way, Christ, even though he didn't say, I am the son of God, he has approved it. Perhaps out of modesty, he didn't say, I am the son of God. Again, one more example, Martha... Brother. Brother, your question. Moment. Brother, your question. You already quoted five verses mm. without giving references. No, no, What's I, your question? Brother? I'm not come prepared for that. That's why I'm not quoted. Fine. I will give you the reference. No problem, brother. I will give you the reference. I'll help you. Yes. I'll help you, brother. No problem. What's your question? Do you mean to say by quoting all these five things, Jesus claimed divinity? Yes. Fine. I'll give you a reply. My challenge, brother, was point out a single unequivocal statement. In the complete Bible, where Jesus Christ, peace be upon himself, says that I am God, or where he says, worship me, I am ready to accept Christianity. You did not point out a single statement, unequivocal statement, in the complete Bible, where Jesus Christ, peace be upon himself, says that I am God, or where he says, worship me. Here is the Bible, brother. This is the King James Version. And since you're a teacher and you claim to be a pastor, you're a pastor. No, no, no. You're a teacher. I'm a teacher. Teacher, but not I'm a an teacher. ordinary believer of Christianity. Fine. 